Okay, we're now recording. Uh, so welcome. Thank you to Melanie and Miranda, who are going to talk about Web Accessibility 101, the level one course. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So we are excited to be here today to talk to you about our new professional development opportunity. Um, it is the Web Accessibility 101 course, and we're going to specifically focus on level one of the course and just kind of talk about what's in it, um, what you can expect, and also give you a sneak peek of it. Oops. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, first off, just to kind of give you some background about the course itself and kind of how it came about. Um, so this is actually has come about through our ICT accessibility work group. Um, the work group itself was established initially back in 2018. Um, former Provost Dunst created, uh, excuse me, Dunn, not Dunst, <laughs> created the, um, the work group specifically to um, revise and update what was then the web accessibility policy. Um, we wanted to make sure that the policy that we were using was um, current and was basically, um, I guess, in line with, with current expectations around web accessibility. Um, so in 2019, uh, late 2019, those revisions were approved. And uh, with those revisions came a name change. So we changed the policy for web accessibility to ICT, which stands for Information, Communication, and Technology. So uh, it changed to the ICT accessibility policy. And the name change was mainly to make sure that um, we were um, not just focusing on websites, but um, you know, all things that are related to um, digital electronic content. Um, and so that's where the information communication technology comes from. Um, so at that point, we then shifted our focus uh, the group's focus to um, looking at um, ways to help the institution um, be compliant with the policy. And um, we felt like before we could expect our colleagues to comply with the policy, we first had to um, make sure that everyone kind of had, I guess, a good understanding or at least a basic understanding or awareness of web accessibility and what's involved with it. And so that's where the course um, came in. And so uh, the purpose of the level one specifically uh, of the Web Accessibility 101 course is to offer that basic web accessibility training uh, for faculty and department staff uh, who are supporting online learning. And also in doing that, um, providing the course, making it available, but also having uh, folks to complete the course will allow us to move closer to compliance with our institutional policy, as well as the federal and state laws that exist um, that require online content to be accessible to all users. And so um, as far as the training format uh, is concerned, it is a Canvas course. Uh, so it is online and it is asynchronous. Um, within the course, there are uh, various modules and um, you guys, I'm sure, are familiar with how Canvas courses work. Um, with this one, there are a few quizzes. You have a quiz within um, each module. In order to move to the next module, you'll want to successfully complete um, the quizzes in the module that you're in. Okay, um, so um, there was a question that I want to make sure um, I address. Uh, there was a question about how this course will differ from uh, the one NC State has a, a web accessibility course, um, which is about six weeks long. Um, this will probably be similar. Um, it will certainly, I'm familiar with, with the course. Uh, that you're talking about. Um, it has some very similar elements. Like I know that course um, focused a lot, if I'm not mistaken, on like document accessibility. 
um, I don't recall if it had anything related to like um, multimedia, um, web or, or um, online platforms, um, things outside of document accessibility. I remember that there was a big focus on that. So there is some of that in this course and I'll um, talk more about what's in the course as well in just a little bit. But um, I think there will be some things that will be a little different from, um, from what you might have gotten from the NC State course. Okay, so um, talking about the um, estimated time, I'm not sure why this isn't showing completely. I don't know if I've got, I'm gonna just stop uh, sharing for just a second and see if I can get my screen uh, about that. Okay. I'm trying to get it so my screen is uh, showing everything on the on the PowerPoint. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, the amount of time that we estimate it will take to complete the course, uh, we're estimating four to eight hours, but um, it is of course self-paced. So you, you know, go at your own pace. Also, if you do have some um, knowledge about certain topics within web accessibility, you could certainly um, you know, skim through those topics or even skip the topics that you're familiar with. Um, and then focus on those, those topics that maybe you aren't as familiar with um, to reduce the amount of time you, you might need to complete the course. So when we talk about um, who should complete the training, um, and with level one, again, that's your basic web accessibility um, will be the focus. So pretty much anyone who's creating content um, that will be shared online will certainly benefit from this uh, level one uh, section of the course. But um, at this point, when we think about, I guess, who would be priority at this current time, we really want to focus on our content creators who um, are basically creating course related content that's going to be shared um, and published online. And those would specifically be our instructors and our staff who are supporting online learning. And so these would be the folks who are creating um, or authoring online materials. And they could also be locating or purchasing online materials, all of which would be um, then shared uh, likely through a, an online course. And uh, some example positions that might fall into that priority training for level one would be, of course, our full-time instructors who are teaching online courses, um, academic ITCs, librarians, graduate assistants, and admin, administrative assistants as well, but also um, those employees who may be um, overseeing professional development training that's being offered online. And I have a few examples there, like I know there's a FERPA online training banner, there's a banner training. And then ITS, um, human resources, UTLC, student affairs, those are all areas or all units on campus that a lot of times they're offering some online training. Um, and so these would, be some of the, the um, positions or units that would certainly benefit from uh, level one training. And we would consider to be in that priority training group. So as far as incentives, um, of course, there's the whole thing around compliance. You know, we do wanna be compliant with our um, ICT accessibility policy, but also with the state and federal um, policies or, or laws and regulations that are out there uh, regarding web accessibility. And then also um, you do get a completion badge and certificate at the end of completing uh, 
each level. Um, so with level one, you complete that, you will um, be able to use that for professional development hours for those instructors who are needing to have continuing um, professional development hours. Uh, you can use this uh, level one training for that, as well as staff who um, may need to have professional development hours for their performance plans, performance management plans, you can use this uh, completion of level one for that as well. Just checking. Okay, just wanted to make sure I didn't have any other questions to address. Um, so just a uh, description of level one. So I mentioned before, it's going to be um, an introduction to web accessibility. And it's gonna start out with, with focusing on some of the basic fundamentals things like uh, what is web accessibility, why is it important? Um, and then there are some how-tos on um, using accessible design principles and practices that are out there. Um, it does touch on some of the laws and some of the legal aspects as well um, and laws that are pertaining to higher ed. Um, and that kind of gets us started with the, the course itself. That's going to be your first, um, the first part of the course. And so some of the other topics that you'll find, there's a topic on assistive technology, which talks about um, some of the uh, technology that people with disabilities use that allow them to access um, content that is online whether it's on a website, a document, um, you know, uh, videos. Um, it just talks about some of the technology that is used that allows that, that type of access. Um, there's also a section that focuses on UDL and accessibility and how they connect or how they intersect. Um, there's also the accessible design principles um, that will cover a variety of areas um, in a few that I've listed there, um, accessible text, images, color, and spacing. Um, there's also a um, section that focuses on uh, Canvas accessibility, as well as multimedia, talks about um, captioning, audio description, um, some other things that you want to think about as you are um, using whether it's video recordings and that sort of thing. And there's also a section on um, accessible email. Then there's a, also a, a topic that uh, focuses on accessible, accessible documents. Um, and then there's also a really good section on um, things to think about as you are using and purchasing accessible materials. And these would be the, the materials that you're probably not creating yourself. Maybe you're finding um, resources um, or you're, you're purchasing software or um, you know, you're wanting to use a, a website, basically your, your third party um, resources and materials that, you, that you're wanting to use um, in your online courses. Um, so that, that's a really, I think, a really good section um, and helpful section as well. And then there's the last part of the course of level one talks about creating an action plan and um, helping you to focus on how to get started when it comes to creating your content. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can be considered, should be considered, but um, if you're new to accessibility, um, it's not always, um, it's not always the ex expectation that you tackle everything all at once. Um, so that's kind of where the action plan can come in and help you to figure out what's your first step and, you know, how can you move forward with your planning and um, making sure that you're tackling accessibility in a way that's um, appropriate, but also manageable for you. So um, as I mentioned, we expect to have um, two additional levels, level two and level three. And um, level two, I think Miranda had put in the chat when we expect to have uh, Yes, yes, she did talk um, in the chat listed that we're planning to have levels two and level three um, starting hopefully next year um, in 2022. Um, so just to kind of give you a brief description of what we uh, 
plan to have a level two. It will be uh, some more advanced topics and they will build on what was learned in level one. So um, the three that three main areas that will be focused that will have a focus is um, accessible STEM, um, accessible complex images. So what will be covered regarding images in level one will be more, I guess, basic. And you're talking about um, images that don't have a great amount of details um, that need to be described. So um, accessible complex images would be things like your diagrams, your charts, uh, figures, tables, those sorts of things. And then uh, level two will also cover, cover social media. Oh, I think I just, yeah, okay. Uh, level three is gonna be the most advanced level. Um, and that focus is gonna be more on remediation um, and how to fix um, your online content. Um, hopefully, as you're creating your content, if you're creating it with accessible um, elements, you shouldn't have a need for remediation, but there are times when, uh, you know, maybe we receive uh, content that was created by someone else and it's now yours. And so, um, you know, you may need to remediate or fix some of the content that's there. So some of the uh, topics that will be covered will include accessible forms, uh, accessible PDFs, how to fix common accessibility coding errors. This would be for like websites and web pages. And then also um, how to conduct an accessibility audit. And then um, it will also go over the WCAG 2.1 standards, which WCAG stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Um, and those are basically guidelines that are used mostly for, again, websites and web pages as you're creating and designing um, websites and web pages. These are, are guidelines that you can follow and really should follow to make sure that what you're creating um, is accessible. Okay, so there is a question. Um, will everyone be required to complete uh, level one before moving on to the next level of training? Um, it, it, it does build um, on the previous. So, so yes, so if you're wanting to take level two, you'd have to complete level one first. But again, you know, if you are someone who has a, a pretty good foundation in um, web accessibility, um, at least the basics, you know, the basics of web accessibility, you know, you could be one of those individuals who can maybe skim through, maybe just kind of, you know, refresh yourself on certain topics, take the quiz, and you know, for each module and move on that way. But yeah, you would have to complete level one before you move to level two. And then you'd have to complete level two before you get to level three. Okay, so now we're going to give a sneak peek and I'm gonna turn it over to Miranda. She is going to um, stop sharing here. She's going to uh, show you some of, there we go, some of the things that you'll see in level one. Hi everyone, I have the fun slide, the fun job of showing you the demo of Web Accessibility 101. So I am in student view and Canvas. So hopefully you all can see my screen all right. You can um, see the homepage of the Canvas course. So this is the Canvas org. As Melanie's mentioned, it's self sign up. So you can enroll in this on your own. And once you're enrolled as a student, this is what you'll see. So we worked with our graphic designer on our team at UNCG Online to design the look and the feel of um, the course. So you'll be introduced to this beautiful banner image. And then we have a description of Web Accessibility 101. We are very optimistically planning for level two in summer 2022. So you get a preview description of level two as well as level three. We do have information on the homepage about how this is um, um, an op option for you to do your continued professional development requirement through Web Accessibility 101. And then there's information about where do we get this material? And by we, I mean Melanie. My role is primarily to help build the content into this Canvas course. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this demo for you is because I built the pages of the content that Melanie created along with some of this 
um, Creative Commons content. So this is how the homepage is structured. And next, I will show you how the syllabus is structured. Here's our syllabus. Just like with any course design, we wanted to make sure we have very clear course objectives to help, help you understand what are you doing and why are you doing it. Information on the required technology you might need, assignments and assessments, a grading policy, because this is a self sign up course, it's asynchronous, all at your own pace. So we do have um, some requirements for moving through each of the modules in level one. You have to pass your quizzes, for example. Um, but it is not a type of course where an instructor has to grade your assignments before you move on. We really wanted this to be something that is simple for anyone taking it to go through and really go at their own pace. We do estimate it'll take you four to eight hours. And then if you have questions, of course, you contact Melanie, um, or you can always contact me as well. My contact info is not on this page because again, I'm kind of the person just putting the meat on the bones, but um, she would always pass along a question to me if you had one for me. So now I'm gonna go to modules and I will show you level one. I won't show you all of level one. It's a really robust course and there's a lot of content that goes into it. I'll do a really quick scroll through the bottom of level one, then I'm gonna go back to module one. So the level one is organized by module as Melanie, Melanie alluded to already. So it's built with pages. Quizzes are built into each of the modules. Lots of great content an evaluation survey at the end, and then a wrap up piece. To kind of give you an idea of what the module structure looks like, I wanted to show you very briefly this module one overview. This is kind of a meta module that really introduces you to how the course is structured. So you start with a welcome. Use your back and next buttons to navigate, of course. And the really unique thing about the way that Melanie structured this content is that every module was organized using headers that describe what you're going to read, watch, and explore. So we have pages organized by these banners that demonstrate to you when you're going to be reading something, when you'll be watching something, a video, usually they're um, YouTube videos, sometimes they're linked out, sometimes they're embedded on the page and then other resources for you to explore. So these are web pages we link out to. So for example, these are um, links to the Canvas guides. They'll open a new tab for you. And can I also just uh, quickly add, so as Miranda said, you've got these and you'll, you'll see this set up with uh, each module, the uh, read, watch, explore. So um, you can choose how you, um, get the information, you know, uh, you may want to focus on reading what's there. Um, you may want to focus on the videos or, you know, you may want to focus on those resources. So it, it, it's there. It's not to say that you have to read, watch, explore every single thing that's on the page. You can pick and choose kind of um, connecting and tying into UDL. Thanks, Melanie. That is a great point. Hopefully that makes it feel a little bit more manageable for you all and more approachable. I know some people would really prefer to watch videos. I personally prefer to read things on the page, um, but there's a variety of options for you. So I'll click next now. And I'll just show you an example of a page in a module. This is the FAQ page. So I highly recommend when you all start this course, you do read through all of the FAQs. A lot of them are sort of debunking some common myths and misconceptions about accessibility. The idea of how to make a course accessible, but also exciting and creative. The laws we all have to follow and be in compliance with. And I'm just scrolling pretty quickly. So again, please read through these on your own time, of course. Melanie, if there's one you wanted me to mention specifically, I can read through it. Otherwise, I'll just let you look at these again like on your own time. I'll go ahead and click next. And so this shows you the beginning of module two. So module two and level one is where you're really going to get into what is accessibility, how does it benefit everyone, what is UDL, and then you get an overview of the activities that you'll be working through. But I will stop my screen sharing here so I don't give everything away before you sign up and take the course yourself. 
And now I will hand it back to Melanie and she will go through how to enroll with the self-enrollment link. Yes, and I just um, added the, I put the self-enrollment link in the chat. So um, you can feel free to use that at any time. I think I just really have, you know, the last few slides is just about uh, the self-enrollment, which like I said, I added in the, in the chat. And um, then of course there's my contact information. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me. Um, I'm also going to put, um, the link I just added um, is, a page from our accessibility resources uh, site. And it just has a, a, a description of the, uh, of the course. So it's accessibility.uncg.edu slash training. And so you can go there, feel free to share that with um, others. And um, I think we may have a little bit of time, just a little bit of time for questions. So um, if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to Take those at this time. Okay, so. Okay, oh, uh, Sam, the, you weren't able to see the chat. Was everyone else able to see the chat? I think Sam might have had some, some issues, but. Um, okay. Yeah, it's like Sam might be having a few tech issues, but all right. So do we have any other questions? Also, we are, you know, in our, our phase of promote, promoting at this point. Um, so we, you will probably hear more about this within the next few weeks or so. Um, you may even see us at some other meetings. So hopefully this <laughs> won't be too redundant if you happen to see us again, but. Um, if there aren't any questions, then I think we're all done. Anything else to add, Miranda? No, just a thank you for letting me do the demo. And hopefully that little sneak peek made this seem exciting. But I think it's very exciting. And hopefully it showed you that this is something that, you know, it's going to benefit yourself and your students. And um, it's, I think it's a great professional development opportunity. I do too. And I hope. Everyone will be able to take part in it and benefit from it. Um, but as I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And thank you for having us. Thank you both. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay.